Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next war recap video. This is the war against We Are Spartans. Uh, definitely a close war. Came down to the wire. They won by a two star margin. Uh, so hats off to them. They had a nice performance and had some awesome attacks as well. So we'll look, take a look at the bases and see what the difference was really. You can see they got the 11s two starred and all the Town Hall 10s three starred besides Mr. Alec, who had some nice defenses uh, to hold off some of the attackers on him but uh, besides that all the tens three starred all the nines three starred and what we did was pretty similar same stuff on the town hall 11s but we left three town hall 10s on the table right there uh, all the town hall nines three starred also so i uh, don't mean to make excuses really because this shouldn't be an excuse but we had two disconnections which really sucked and uh, might have cost us a star or two so not to take anything away from we are spartans because they deserve to the win and they had a nice war but it's just frustrating when things like that happen so anyway we'll keep our heads up and keep moving along but today have some nice attacks to show we're taking a look at first some town hall 10 versus town hall 11 action this is boom shakalaka and honestly i don't know if boom shakalaka has been on the channel yet i just don't remember saying his name his name seems like something you'd uh remember saying because it's kind of unique but i just i can't remember ever saying his name even though he's been in the clan for so long doing nice attacks it maybe i just have never shown him or maybe it's been a while i don't know but either way if this is your debut congrats but if it's not i'm sorry i forgot uh, but this was a nice attack by boom shakalaka and it's so important for our town hall 10s to be able to to star the town hall 11s now this base actually was kind of set up to defend against the baby dragon valk combo attack the baby dragon or whatever people call it because you can see the teslas were on the outside of the base and there's actually a few seeking air mines that i think one of them actually catches uh his baby dragons so this guy was definitely thinking he might be uh attempted to be two-starred by a town hall 10 uh, that being said, this base still has all the air defenses pretty central, the expos pointed down, so even with these measures the guy took, and right there the Seeking Air Mine gets that baby dragon, but even with the measures this guy took to uh, set up his base to defend against this specific strategy, it actually works out real well because of how spread out his base is really. So you can see uh, Boom Shakalaka is going to get about... Uh, 33, 34% taken out with his baby dragons, which is a solid amount, not great, but considering the Teslas and all the traps he had to deal with, uh, that's a pretty solid amount of the base taken out. Coming in here with the Valks, I like the early freeze on that Eagle. Uh, just get it out of the way while the, the Valks are in a big group and they're vulnerable to being hit by that splash damage of the Eagle. Has the poison for the CC troops and the heroes, a rage, a heal, everything moving in real fast here. It's hard to tell exactly what's happening, but has the uh, the jump down to connect the town hall. And although most of his Valks have gone down, he has both his heroes left up. The king is now on the town hall with a few Valks that will die in just a second. Pops the queen's ability. She has just enough juice to take out that town hall. So came down to the wire. But the reward for coming in at that angle is that his Valks kind of fanned out a little bit and they took out more percentage than they typically would do on one of these kill squad dives. So he actually got 64% of the base taken out, which is awesome. That's like a huge percentage for a Town Hall 10 on a Town Hall 11. And that definitely set us up to at least have a shot at winning the war. So nice attack to Boom Shakalaka. Very important for the Town Hall 10s to, th to two-star the Town Hall 11s, especially with that kind of percentage. Uh, just awesome stuff. Now, we did have two Town Hall 10 three-stars that were Town Hall 10 v. Town Hall 10. The rest were uh, Town Hall 11s dipping down. But one of them was the, my attack that I showed in the attack strategy video a few videos back. So I'm not going to show that again, obviously. So we're just going to take a look at the one other Town Hall uh, 10 three-star, which is Groovy Tony. And this base is a little bit lower level, which does help. But still, it's always hard to three-star a Town Hall 10 with a good layout uh, that you see here. So it comes in with just kind of a, it was a golem queen combo to start. Then comes in with his main force, uh, the bowlers, the, his heroes, the spells. Uh, enough to get in there, get the inferno, get the queen 
get the uh, those kind of central defenses, some of those Teslas and Expos, get most of that stuff taken out, get the base under control. Then the, the miners come in, and you can see this guy had skelly traps. He had uh, the Inferno. He had a, in uh, storages, all that stuff by the Inferno to try to uh, kind of throw off the miners a little bit. But despite that, it actually doesn't even work out that well. The miners, uh, even despite all those giant bombs, don't go down in any major numbers. They get through the first or the second inferno of the base. And uh, at this point, because the defenses are Town Hall 9, which definitely helps for minor attacks, and really helps for any attack, I guess, when the defenses are lower level, but especially for minor attacks, I would say, uh, because they're lower level, he doesn't have a whole lot to worry about with that last heal spell and a solid group of miners still left up. I think some of them have that golden shovel because they're max level, which definitely helps. You want to typically bring the level four miners as opposed to like level three bowlers if you're doing a bowler miner attack because the level four miners are two levels above the level two miners that you have. They're just uh, quite a bit more powerful and I think that'll make the difference most of the time. Plus, it's almost easier to deploy because one tap uh, deploys seven miners from your CC. Uh, so some, something to think about. I think most of the time you want to use those level four miners in your CC. But nice attack to Groovy Tony. Getting the three star uh, worked out very well. We'll take a look at some Town Hall 9 attacks and as always have a lot of diversity to show you guys at Town Hall 9. The first two were going to be air attacks which we're seeing more and more at Town Hall 9. I think they're just a little more consistent right now. But uh, that being said, a lot of ground attacks are also dominating, and you'll see some of that as well. But remember that mini tip I talked about only like a few hours ago, or whenever, like six hours ago when I made that mini tip? He used that baby dragon to take out the mortar to keep the golem from straying down to the bottom, where it might have been out of range of the wall breakers where they entered the base. So by taking out that mortar, he ensures both golems enter the base. So good job there following my mini tip even after I uploaded it, and uh, yeah, so comes in with the jump, the rage, the heal, which is something that I think is underrated at both Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10, using that heal on the bowlers because uh, we're not seeing healers being used as much, and because of that, uh, you need something else to heal your bowlers, and uh, that's when you go to the heal spell, so kept the bowlers alive to get them nice and deep into the base, gets that next Inferno Tower taken out, uh, you can see the top of the base is kind of an anti laloon It has all those Teslas, the uh, wizard towers, all that stuff out of range of an air defense. So no Lava Hound is going to be tanking. But the queen actually makes her way up to the top and she takes out most of those defenses, especially the Teslas. So it just kind of overpowers this base. He got such a big chunk taken out with the kill squad that even though that base was kind of set up to defend against uh, air attacks on the top right side, he overpowers it with his balloons and his queen and uh, has the cleanup to get the rest of the base taken out. So nice attack there to Sagheart. Fast forward to the end and we'll move on to, let's see, base number 15. Uh, let's try to remember this attack. This is Shrek and uh, yeah, this was an, also a nice attack. Uh, take a look at the beginning because this was a really sneaky thing he did that uh, some of you guys might want to try out. Works out nicely on certain bases. Goes ahead and zap quakes that first air defense, but um, you'll notice he drops down a haste in three balloons to get in there and take out the archer tower. You might wonder why he did that. That's actually a CC lure because this is a fresh base. Basically, he's afraid that if he comes in with his lava hounds and balloons, there's going to be wizards or a baby dragon, something that will take out all his air troops. So he wants to lure out anything that targets air troops, but he doesn't want to lure Valks or a lava hound or anything that won't, because then it'll just be an issue for his queen and his king, which is unnecessary. So he drops the balloons in to lure out any potential air targeting CC troops, because there is none, he can confidently send in his uh, lava hounds and balloons without any risk of the CC troops taking them out, and uh, his king and queen stay out of range for a while. Uh, that that makes it so that even whatever is in the CC will not come out because uh, nothing's in range that is a ground troop. So he got some pretty good value for his king on the left side. Tanked for a while, got some trash buildings and a Tesla taken out. So good use of the king when he really wasn't uh, otherwise doing a whole lot. 
The queen took out the enemy queen at the beginning, also kind of did a mini walk without any healers, a suicide walk, I guess, and got more of the, more of the base taken out, a few defenses. Has that last level 4 Lava Hound to tank for the remaining defenses. Uh, some people deploy the Lava Hound on the... Uh, be at the beginning, some people deploy at the end. I don't know if it matters that much. I I just say if there's one lava hound that while you're planning you think will take more damage than the others, or one lava hound where you think it would help to have more hit points at a, a certain point in the attack, use the max lava hound then. But besides that, I don't think it matters that much as a general rule. So. Uh, Nice attack to Shrek. He chose to use that level 4 Lava Hound at the end, but like I said, it probably doesn't matter that much. We're taking a look at CFM3, uh, and this was a very cool attack, and I think this base was perfect for it. Uh, it's a 4 Golem, uh, stoned, or not stoned anymore, I don't know, 4 Golems, whatever you call it, a 4 Golem uh, Hobo attack. So this is something that's becoming much more popular because people aren't using healers as much. Uh, this is kind of replacing HGHB, and I'll talk about healers in an upcoming video, I think, but I want to wait and see kind of how they play out because not a whole lot of time has passed since the update. I think it might be a little bit early to really say what healers are going to become at Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10. I think it's just a little bit too early, so I'll talk about them soon once I have some more information, a better perspective. But uh, you can see CFM comes in here with the four golems. And like I said, this base was perfect for this attack because these compartments are really easy to predict the pathing. That one middle compartment, uh, not a whole lot of places for the bowlers to walk around to. You know they're going to take that first jump into those two skinny compartments in the middle. Uh, the pathing is just perfect. That next jump, also very easy. Uh, pathing to predict. That way you know the golems will stay out in front tanking. You know the bowlers won't stray off and get killed. Uh, they're going to follow the, the, the golems because uh, the pathing is so predictable. And then has just like 10, or not even 10 hogs maybe, but just a few hogs to come in here, take out some defenses that can't quite be reached. I think a baby dragon on the right side there. Awesome stuff. Uh, nicely planned attack. Great base identification. Uh, some of these bases are just perfect for that stoned hobo attack. So nice stuff there. We'll take a look at one more, uh, number 28. I wanted to show this one because we don't see this attack that much, but I think it might be uh, something that could be used more, uh, especially on certain bases uh, where everything just kind of works out pretty well for this strategy. This is Dominion coming in here on number 28 with a... I think people call it Vaby Dragon, which seems like kind of a a weak name for it almost. But I think that's what I've heard people call it. And uh, it's the Baby Dragon Valk combo. This base works out well because it kind of is a natural flow for the Valks. Because there's that one little gap between the compartments, they naturally move off to the right side. The queen sits back, snipes that first air defense, and as these air defenses go down, he deploys the baby dragons. That's how you want to do it. Don't wait to the end to deploy the baby dragons. Deploy them as you go. As soon as an air defense is about to go down, drop the baby dragon on that side of the base because they will do three things for you. They will take out trash buildings to help the pathing of your Valks, make it so the Valks stay inside the base. That's the first thing. Second thing is they'll tank for archer towers, possibly expos, so they'll take a little bit of damage off your kill squad. And third, they will even get in there and take out some defenses, as you can see right there. Uh, so that's another benefit, especially uh, when you have level 2 baby dragons. They have enough hit points, do enough damage to get pretty deep into the base, start to take out actual defenses rather than just trash buildings. So this base is pretty much toast. A lot of the time, you'll get your kill squad will get just enough to... to uh, get the three star they'll get just the air defenses but dominion's kill squad actually will stay up the entire attack oftentimes the baby dragons are what's going to be left over to finish off the base but he actually has both parts of the attack still up when uh everything's said and done so awesome stuff there hope you guys like the recap i'm planning to do possibly a base destruction video uh, from this war and maybe some defensive videos who knows we'll see how it goes just kind of play it by ear uh, whatever I think the best content is to do. 
uh, tomorrow in the next few days. But you guys will see some more awesome stuff on the channel, I guess is what I'm saying. So stay tuned. One, one last time, awesome job to We Are Spartans. And uh, it was a good war. And I look forward to uh, being in some more arranged wars, hopefully. This was awesome to get back into this arranged war scene because I haven't been in quite a few arranged wars. I haven't been in the last like two or three. So it was nice to get back, get a fresh three star. Felt awesome. And uh, hopefully have a few more uh, soon. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys like the attacks as always. And I'll see you guys in the next few days. Bye, Sectatron out.